Welcome to the April 2019 update of the Power BI Desktop. As always, we have lots of exciting features this month, and we're going to start off with the reporting features. First up, we have a ton of improvements for our filter pane preview. As you know, if you've been following our monthly updates, we've been migrating our filter pane out of its current home in the visualizations pane and giving it a fully dedicated pane that feels more like part of their report and less part of the UI and Chrome around the report, which really helps improve the usability. And like I said, we've been working on adding a lot of new functionality to this preview, and this month is no exception. We have five new features that we're going to walk through. The first is that we now have full authoring capability in the new filter pane. So I don't, I no longer have to go and add and remove things from the original filter pane. I can now use the new one to just add new filters. You can just drag and drop them right in and the filter cards are there. And of course, like I said, I can remove them as well. And since we now have the new filter pane full authoring capabilities there, you no longer will see the filter pane in the field well area where it's now completely removed when you had the preview fe feature for the new filter pane on and you'll do all of your editing right here in the new pane. This month, we also added the ability to change the title of individual filter cards. So all I have to do is double click and I can type in any kind of name that I want. And it can be different than, of course, from the name that was f of the field itself. We don't update that field name. It's specifically being aliased for that filter card. And you can still hover over the card to see what the original field name was. The new filter pane also scales with the report. Like I mentioned earlier, we really want this filter pane to feel like it's part of the report itself and not part of the Chrome. So as the report gets bigger or smaller, you know, we of course scale the visuals. The same is now true for the, for the pane as well. So as I collapse these other panes and more space is given to the, the report page and filter pane, both the visuals and the text in the filter pane increase in size. And the same is true the opposite. As they lose room for the canvas, both of them shrink. We now also let you decide if you're in users, the consumers of your report can change the filter type between the advanced mode and the basic mode. And you can do that in the options dialog. So if you go file, options and settings, options, and then go under the report settings, you'll see that you have this option to e either allow your user to change the filter type or not. And like I said, that's to let you switch between basic and advanced. That's the drop down. So if I put a, let's go with a measure field into here, you can see right now the filter type drop down lets me pick between basic and advanced. And as an author, I still be able to set this for myself, do I want users, do I want the default to be basic or advanced? But I can also choose to, through that option in the dialog, have my end users not see this option. Lastly, we've also improved the keyboard navigation for the new filter pane. So the experience you have as you tab through the different elements of the pane is going to be very similar to the experience that you had in the old filter pane and the information that screen readers would read off as you're navigating with the keyboard if you had one enabled is also improved as well. The next feature under reporting is conditional formatting for visual titles. So since the initial release of Power BI, you've always been able to customize the text of your titles, but it's always had to be static text. But since you know Power BI reports are highly interactive, it makes sense that you may want your titles to be dynamic and reflect the current state of the report based off of what users are clicking on, filter states, things like that. So now you can use the conditional formatting dialog to change, to actually change the text of your report based off of a DAX expression in your model. So if we go to the report, you, if we take this line chart for example, and you can see here the title is units by year, quarter, month, and class, which is right. 
but it's not taking into account the filter context from the slicer here for brand name. So while it's true that that's what we're seeing, it, we're only seeing the data specifically for Northwind traders. And if I wanted my line chart to reflect that, there's no good way to do that until now with the conditional formatting. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go under the formatting pane for that visual and go to the title card. And you'll see here there's this, these three little dots indicating there's a little menu available for the title. And that's the indicator that we now have conditional formatting enabled for this. So I can either click on the three little dots and pick conditional formatting, or I could actually right click on the field as well. And when I pick conditional formatting, a dialog pops up that will let me pick what field I want to format on. And this screen is the same screen that you would see for conditional formatting if you chose to format by field value for say your uh, column within a table. And so I have written up a uh, measure that I want to use as my line chart title and so I'll select that and I hit OK. And now you'll see that that card from the formatting pane you no longer can read the title text here and there's a little FX icon to let you know that this one this title is now being dynamically formatted. And you can see here my title also is now dynamically formatted based off of the brand name I picked. So if I switch to say Contoso here, my title along with the data is automatically updated to reflect that I'm now focusing on Contoso data. Um, so you can, I'll click on the measure real quick so that you can see the, the DAX I wrote. So you can see here my DAX, it has to be a text field. Um, so I start off with some text, like units by time and class, and then I just say I want to add on the whatever the selected value for brand name is. And you can do however complex DAX that you want, anything you can write in DAX, as long as it returns text at the end of the day, you can now use display that in your title. The last feature under reporting is very similar to the one we just covered around visual titles but this time for URL actions for buttons, shapes, and images. Again, you can now dynamically change the value of the URL in this case based off of current filter context. So the experience would be the same if I have, say, a measure that I have a URL being generated from. So in this case, I, I'm pointing to another report in the Power BI service, but you could imagine it pointing to, say, Dynamics or a reporting services report or whatever you want to point to with some URL parameters that would be defined based off of the, the current filter context of your report. And all I have to do is select the button that I want to format dynamically. And in this case, I'll go into the action card where I said that I want to have a web URL. And again, you'll see the same same UI, the same three dots, the same option on the right click menu. And I can choose to conditionally format if I want to by that measure. And then anytime I click on the button going forward, it would take me to that URL with that filter context applied. These two conditional formatting features are just the first of many properties that are going to be able to be conditionally formatted in the coming months. We really want to allow you to do most, if not all, of the properties in the formatting pane. Allow them to be uh, dynamically controlled based off of any expression that you write. We also have plans to allow you to to actually enter an expression directly into the dialog instead of having to build the measures in your model. So watch for the, those updates in the coming months as we add more to this feature area. Next up is analytics. And the first feature in that section is drill through across reports. We've had our drill through feature for quite some time. And this feature is the feature that lets you designate certain pages as drill through pages within a report. And then you can access those pages through right clicking on a visual and saying you want to navigate to that page with the filter context. 
What this allows you to do is set up a navigation experience for your users where they're able to navigate to the next level of detail when they choose to through right click. The limitation of this feature has always been that the, both the source and the target pages of the drill through had to be within the same report. With this month's release, you can now also enable drill through across reports as well. So your source page, the one with the visual you're right clicking on, and the target page, the one you want to land on with the filter context, can be in completely different reports. To set this up, you first start with the target page. This is the page that you want to land on. And you set it up just like a normal drill through page. You say that you pick out what field you want to be the field you're linking between in my case, store name. And the only other thing you have to do is turn on this cross report tog toggle that says you want this target page to be discoverable by other reports within a workspace. And then you just publish it up to the Power BI service to the workspace that you want it to be in. From there, you'll go to the reports that you want to be the sources of and also enable them for a cross report drill. Now you could do that in the options dialog or you could do it through the options pane of the Power BI service. So I'm gonna to go to the Power BI service and do it. And I'll, all you have to do is, again, for the source, uh, the source report, in my case, this SU3 report, you just go to the settings of it. And then at the bottom of the pane, you'll see this option called cross report drill through. And when you turn this toggle on, this source report can see those target drill through pages from any other report within the same workspace. And so you turn that on, which I've already done, and then I'm going to open the report. And then all I have to do is right click on a visual that has that same field that I used to set up the target page, in this case, store name. And I'll just right click on a data point there, see the drill through page. And you can see here it lists the page name that I may be drilling through to. And also, since this is from a different report, the name of the report as well. So I can just click that option and it will take me to that report with the filter context of this particular store that I right clicked on. Next up under analytics is an improvement to our key influencers visual and that it now supports continue analysis as well. So if you recall from the video where we discussed this preview visual, this visual allows you to, to specify something that you want to analyze, such as what influences my sales size to be a specific value like large, and have it explained by any number of fields you think might influence that field you're analyzing. One of the restrictions of the first release of this visual was that it always had to be something categorical here, like large, medium, small in my case. With this release, we've extended it to also work for continuous values as well. So I can also now say, take my sales amount field, which is numeric, and figure out what influences it to decrease or increase instead of being a specific value. To make sure that you are analyzing on a continuous scale, you may need to go into the formatting pane and open up the analysis card and say that you wanna have the analysis type be continuous versus categorical. And once you do that and you have your continuous field in, behind the scenes, the visual is gonna run a linear regression and rank all of the factors that you've picked as potential influencers by putting them in the explain by bucket of the field well. And then we'll return the ones that are the most interesting. For example, when influencing what causes my sales amount to decrease for Contoso, because it does take into, the, into account filter context, you'll see that when class is economy, that's the thing that's gonna most likely cause my sales to decrease. And it, on average, will cause my sales to decrease by almost $940 every time. We have a great documentation page and videos associated with it that you can also check out as well in case you want to learn, learn more about how the visual actually works behind the scenes. Third on our list is 
that our Python support in the product is now generally available. So you no longer need to turn on a preview feature to be able to use Python to either create your models or visualize it as well. Thank you for all the great feedback you've given us during this preview time. It's really helped us uh, improve the experience for everyone. Lastly, under analytics, we also have partial synonym matching for terms in Q&A as well. This means it makes Q&A just a little bit easier to use because you don't actually have to know the complete term for Q&A to pull it up, just part of it. So for example, if we look at my model for, let's say, sales amount, you'll see that one of the synonyms for sales amount is amounts sold. And let's say I was an end user who was trying to use Q&A, and I couldn't quite remember the term. If I just typed in sold, you'll see here that it does suggest uh, the term amount sold for me to select, even though I couldn't remember the exact phrasing. So this would just improve the usability of Q&A some for your end users. Under modeling, we have a new DAX function this month called all cross filtered. This DAX function can be used to remove filters on a table from other tables across direct or indirect many to many relationships. We have a lot of improvements and updates for data connectivity this month as well. The first of which is that Power BI data flows are generally available and along with that, the connector in Power BI desktop is generally available as well. We have a whole announcement post around the GA of Dataflows, and so you can go check that out to learn more about the Dataflows experience that we have. The Oracle S-Space connector has been in beta for the past few months, and over this period we've been making incremental enhancements to it based off of all the great feedback you guys have been giving us. And with this re month's release, we're adding direct query support, so you can correct create direct query reports that depend on data coming from this data source, and we're also making the connector generally available, which means that you can now use this connector for your production scenarios. Another connector hitting general availability of this month is the PDF files connector. This is one of the most requested connectors from the Power BI Ideas Forum. We've been getting lots of good feedback on it while it's been in beta and been making some incremental enhancements. And so we're very, very happy to announce that it's now generally available for you to use. One thing to note for both of these two connectors is that in order to refresh the data sets in the Power BI service that you're building off of these connectors, you will need to install the April update of the on-premises data gateway, which is going to be released later this month. And you can monitor the Power BI blog for when that release announcement happens. We also have an update to our web by example connector this month. This connector is one of our most innovative and differentiating features in Power BI, especially within the data connectivity space. There's always a lot of excitement whenever this feature gets demoed anywhere because it allows you to just scrape data from HTML pages, supporting any data element on the page, not just HTML tables themselves. And normally all you have to do is provide some sample values for a data you would like to build and be extracted from the web page. But this month we're taking another big step forward with this connector and we're making the connector's AI, AI algorithm even smarter. So now it can automatically suggest tables based off of the HTML element, element repetition patterns within that web page. This is a preview feature, so you will need to enable an option in the options dialog called New Web Table Inference. But once you've done that, you'll see within the normal table uh, tree list that you always have whenever uh, connecting to any data source, you'll be able to see suggested tables as well, which means that in many cases, many of the common cases, you're not even going to need to provide sample outputs. We're just going to figure it out for you. No effort on your own. And so we would love to hear your feedback on this, since it's a preview feature. We really want to know what's working for you, what's not, so that we can continue improving the AI algorithm that backs this new connector type. We have a series of partner connectors as well this month, the first of which is the 
inner systems iris connector. This connector offers Power BI users a seamless and high performance access to the inter systems iris data platform. Besides being able to access the relational tables through the ODBC driver, you can also tap into inner systems iris BI cubes, leveraging the measures and dimensions defined in the data platform. The Indexima connector for Power BI makes it possible to query uh, to query big data directly on your data sources in volumetrics of tens of billions of rows in just a few milliseconds. This technology is built on hyperindex and they say it is a thousand times faster than existing solutions. The next partner connector is Luminous Information Grid and this offers you a resilient application platform to combine high developer productivity with fit for purpose persistence and an easy to manage, monitor, and scalable cloud infrastructure. Fourth is Solver BI360, which provides a user-friendly Azure cloud-based data warehouse budgeting and reporting solution with really quick and easy integration into Power BI. Lastly, the Paxito connector is now generally available and supported by their team. This source is a visually dynamic and intuitive solution that enables business analysts to rapidly ingest profile and curate multiple raw data sets into a consumable information in a self-service manner, which greatly accelerates the development of actionable BI. Our last section, data preparation, also has some pretty major updates this month. The first of which is that there are some data profiling enhancements and that feature data profiling is generally available. If I switch over to my report and open up the query editor, you can see our data profiling UI at the top where you can see the, the inline quality bar and the value distribution histograms. And as you hover over it, of course, you get some statistics on that as well and even some suggestions of things you might want to do like removing duplicates. And this month, we're actually adding something new as well called the Columns Profiles pane. And so what this allows you to do is have this pane open up when you select a column like I did for country that gives you some extra information such as column statistics like number of errors, empty, valid, duplicates, and unique values. I have value distribution measures such as min, max, average, median, etc. And it also shows you column distribution which is a larger version of what you you can see in the histogram up here, which is particularly useful whenever your histogram has a ton of values. This larger version also allows you to do things like have the ability to keep and remove specific, specific uh, values as well. And as you take all these different actions here, of course, they will generate corresponding steps within your applied steps query pane over here as well. You can control the visibility of all three of these, the previous release bar uh, and histograms and this new pane through the view tab. There's check boxes for each of those column profile, column distribution, and column quality. And lastly, a nice improvement as well is that you can now also now switch between the preview based data profiles which we do by default where we do it based off of the top a thousand rows and you can switch it to actually do the column profiling based off of the entire data set as well and lastly like i said earlier this all of these features are now generally available you're going to be able to automatically see them in your query editor without having to turn on a feature switch Next on our list is an improvement to our Fuzzy Merge feature. Fuzzy Merge is another smart data preparation feature that was introduced a few months ago. It allows you to apply fuzzy matching algorithms when comparing columns to try and find matches across tables being merged. Along with announcing that this feature is now generally available, we've also made some significant performance optimizations to this transformation as well, which reduces both the load times and the overall CPU memory usage. 
Of course, your mileage may vary, but based off of our internal testing, we have observed up to a 60x performance boost in some scenarios. So it's a quite a big performance improvement. The last feature this month is some improvements to our M IntelliSense and marking M IntelliSense generally available. M IntelliSense is a feature that allows you to have hints whenever you're writing M code within the Power Query editor. It makes a very seamless experience for discovering function names, function parameters, column names, and many other uh, UI enha enhancements as well, like line numbers, statistics, uh, syntax co coloring, etc. And with this month, we are bringing that M IntelliSense to support to the formula bar and the customs, the custom dialog in addition to the advanced editor, which is already supported. So you can see if I go to add column and click custom column, and I start typing, you'll see that you'll get IntelliSense that tells you, gives you a bunch of information and options for you to select your M code as you're typing it out. And so anywhere that you will normally type M code, either here, the formula bar, the advanced editor, you'll have this nice IntelliSense experience available to you. And like I said, it's generally available, so you don't even need to do anything to turn it on. That's all for this month. So I hope you enjoyed all these new updates and make sure to let us know what you think in the comments. Give us your feedback on what you like, what you want to see added next, and anything else you want to share. Thank you.